Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a few days since we put out a video. We apologize for that. But today, Tina is going to be in her craft room. A lot of people have asked her about her uh, gourd art. And uh, she has locked herself in the craft room. And guys, that's going to leave the kitchen open for us. So we're going to get inside. We're going to make one of our fall favorites. We're going to can that up and show you how we do it. So just hang around after the break. And guys, we'll get into it. Alright guys, what we're going to be canning today is just a real simple ham and beans. It's uh, great over uh, warmed up and dumped over some cornbread or uh, just by itself. But you can call it ham and bean soup, ham and beans, anything you want to call it. But uh, it's a real simple recipe. We're going to put it together. It's a fun thing to do in the fall. And uh, it's getting to soup season where uh, everybody's always just looking for something fast and warm to eat. So guys, we'll get into the kitchen here. I'll explain to you a little bit while we're, what we're doing, um, and it won't be we, it'll be me. So, guys, you get to, you get to see me canning all on my own today, and uh, not a big deal. I love to do it, but uh, you used to seeing Tina do it, then uh, this might come as quite a shocker to you. So, guys, we're going to get in the kitchen. I'll show you the basic ingredients first, and then we're going to get into canning some ham and beans. Alrighty, guys, we're getting ready to start on this ham and bean soup. We're going to be using Great Northern White Beans. We got some leftover Christmas ham, and we've got some onions. So our canner will hold 18 pints, so that's what we're going to be making today. But the first thing we're going to do is get our beans measured out. Now we've already got it done here. We uh, each pint is going to take a half a cup of beans. So we measured out nine cups of beans, and then we added an extra cup because while we were rinsing and uh, going through the beans you know you're going to throw some out so we may have a little over nine cups but we started with ten kneading nine we'll put half a cup in each one and then we'll get to adding these other ingredients so let me start getting these beans measured out and I'll bring you back when we got that done alrighty guys as you can see we've got our beans all divided up into the jars now great northern beans will start to swell about as soon as you uh, put them in water to rinse them or anything else so we had to uh, add a little bit of extra to each jar, but we know that it's still the same as half a cup dry. So, not a big deal. We're going to get over here. We're starting cutting up this ham. We want this in about half inch chunks. So, we're going to go ahead and start working on that. I'll bring you back when we get a little bit closer on them. Alrighty guys, we got our ham chunked up. We got it in the jar with the beans. We actually gave it a little shake so the ham would work its way down into the beans. So we didn't have just layers when it got done cooking. So um, one thing we're going to do because we've put meat in it, a lot of people can dry beans for uh, 70 or 75 minutes. But uh, whenever you mix ingredients, you want to go to the longest timed ingredient. And since we're putting meat in here, that's an automatic 90 minutes. So we're going to be uh, I mentioned that because we're going to be putting the onions in next. We're going to put to slice them up and uh, put them here on top of the beans and ham. But during the cooking process of the 90 minutes, I know they're going to cook down to about nothing. So if you like little pieces of onions, you might want to substitute fresh onions for the dried onion pieces. But we're going to be using fresh onions. It'll just add to the flavor of the broth and maybe a few of them will survive the cooking process. Alrighty guys, hopefully you can see we got the onions down in the jars. And it took about five medium onions to do it, and about half the onions you guys saw sitting here. But the next step, we're going to add our seasoning. Now, I don't usually like to tell people what seasonings to put in their food, but I'll tell you what we're going to put in ours. So, what I've got here in the cup, I tried to put it in there so you could see the different shades of it, but in the bottom we've got some canning salt, and we've got some garlic powder, we've got some onion powder, and we've got some black pepper. So going to be a pretty simple seasoning it's a kind of savory dish just beans and ham so we're going to go ahead we'll stir that up we'll divide it equally among the jars and then we'll bring you guys back all righty guys we're getting all set up for the next step which is to get this stuff canned we've got our pressure canner warming up we've got some water getting ready to boil we've got our lids back here heating up 
I'm going to keep those just slightly below a boil. We got all our jars over here ready to go. Got some rings, got some canning equipment. So we're going to go out here, we're going to try to find Tina to help us put these together since I can't film it and put them together at the same time. So we'll go find Tina, I'll be right back, we'll get to canning. Alrighty guys, I got good news and bad news. The good news is, is that I found Tina. She has uh, locked herself in her craft room. A lot of you have been asking for some of those gourd videos. And she is in there shooting a video for you guys. We'll have up in the next few days. So that's the good news. The bad news is, I had to do the canning, which is fine. I don't mind it. But uh, I can't film and can at the same time. So, guys, we've got all of them 18 in there. And... Uh, we're just going to get this closed up, wait for it to get a good head of steam to it for about 10 minutes. We'll put the weighted gauge on it, and then we're going to let them go for about 90 minutes. But we'll bring you back here along the way and uh, tell you what we're up to. Alrighty guys, we've had a good steam jet coming out of here for about 10 minutes. So it's time for us to go ahead. We're going to put the weighted gauge on. Um, we're going to go ahead and wait until that, uh, first thing it'll do is it'll pop the little pressure sensor up and uh, seal the whole thing. And then we're going to wait for that to start to dance. So when that thing starts dancing, we'll set a timer for 90 minutes. And then we'll uh, let these rock and roll until they're done. So we'll bring you back when we get to that point and show you what we do next. Alrighty guys, the gauge is dancing. That means we're up to temperature. We're going to turn the temperature on the stove down just a little bit to keep it right at the point where it'll just barely keep that thing dancing. We'll set a timer for 90 minutes. And then we'll be back to shut her down and let her cool off a little bit. Alrighty guys, we've had it over here cooling down. The petcock has fallen, so there's no more pressure on the inside. We'll go ahead and remove the weighted gauge. And what we're going to do is crack the lid. We'll move it over, say maybe half an inch or so. And then we're going to let this sit for another 15 minutes or so. And cool on down the rest of the way. It's a good way to help prevent boil out. So we'll go ahead and crack this open, we'll leave it sit, and then we'll come back and take the jars out. Alrighty guys, we've had the top cracked open for about 15 minutes, and it's time to start pulling out the beans. So we get in here and get you a look at them. They look real good. We'll start getting them, we'll put them over here on a towel. So you don't ever want to set a hot jar on a cold surface. But we'll go ahead and get these out of here. And uh, show you kind of how they turned out. I think they're good to me. But we'll get them out and get them sealed up. I'll bring you back one last time and let you know how they all did. Alrighty, guys, that's going to about do it. We've got them all out of the canner now. They all look good. Some of them have already started to seal. They, there's some good ham and beans throw that with some cornbread or just by itself even but uh, that's a uh, that's about gonna wrap it up we got 18 pints and uh, we didn't go too much off a recipe but I'll <clears throat> I'll do my best to put a recipe in the description but that's gonna be our ham and beans for the winter alrighty guys that's about gonna wrap it up they turned out great we're real happy with the results I'm glad uh, we finally got Tina out of the out of the craft room, and she came and helped us uh, unload the canner. But uh, guys, they turned out really good. Um, they are super delicious. Like I said, in the fall, when you're looking for something fast and warm to eat, and uh, especially if you happen to have a pan of cornbread sitting around. So, guys, we really appreciate you coming by the channel. If you enjoyed the video, we hope you'll give it a thumbs up and uh, leave us a comment down below. Tell us what you thought, or tell us what your uh, your fall specialty is for. Uh, um, soups and, and things like that to get you through the winter season and uh, help ward off the flu and the colds but uh, this is one of our mainstays we really like the ham and beans so if you enjoy the content here on the channel guys we hope you'll subscribe there's a there's a little bell down there next to that subscribe button if you'll ring that bell too that'll send you a notification whenever we release a new video guys that's a great way to keep up with the channel so um, when that notification things opens up if you would, set the notifications to all. That'll make sure you don't miss out on anything. But we really enjoyed having you guys here at the channel. We're going to get in here and uh, see what else we can get into. I'm sure uh, Tina is still busy working on her craft stuff. 
So you can watch for those videos coming out soon. But either way, we're glad to have you here at the homestead. We hope you'll uh, hope you enjoyed your time here, and guys, we'll just catch you in the next one.